All right, I'm going to go into the behaviors of light, as you can see on the screen. And many of these we've already talked about before, not all of them. Um, but I'm going to go into them in a little bit more detail. Also, like before, this section will be, um, there'll be shorter videos kind of cut up by several other videos that I really want you to see. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. So the, the interesting thing about light is that light can behave in one of two ways. See, for a long time, people didn't really know what light was. It's just kind of something we take for granted. And then somebody was like, well, what is this? Um, when people first started to define light, they thought it was a particle, like spray paint, like just something going through the air, which makes sense, right? Um, but then someone else decided, no, it's actually a wave. And there's going to be more on that in a video I'm going to show you. Um, and it was a big debate for a long time. Um, long story short, the debate is now settled. The answer is both. Uh, it can behave as a wave or as a particle. It's actually a little bit of both. And as an explanation of that, um, it's kind of a little bit the same thing as saying that I'm a teacher at school and I'm a father at home. And my, my, my kids, my children, wouldn't call me Mr. Valls just like you wouldn't call me dad. Could that be weird? It doesn't mean I'm two different people. It means I have two different roles. Or in another way of looking at it, depending on where you see me, I might look and act a little bit different, right? Same thing with light. Depending on how we observe light, what we do with it, and what kind of things we look at, we're going to see a slightly different things. So it turns out it's a particle called a photon moving in the form of a wave. So there's five things that light does that makes it a wave, things that all other waves do. Right, so it matches um, a wave pattern. Uh, so we're gonna make sh we're gonna call it a wave. So those are wave behaviors, but there are also two particle behaviors. So we're gonna go to the wave behaviors of light first. Again, many of which we've already talked about because we've been talking about waves. And the five wave behaviors of light are reflection, refraction, diffraction, interference, and polarization. Say that five times fast. Reflection, refraction, diffraction, interference, and polarization. We've already talked about four of these five, right? So we're going to really blaze through them. Reflection is the first one. It's when light bounces off of stuff. Again, all waves do this. Water waves, string waves, sound waves is called an echo. Um, so obviously you have a mirror at home. Mirrors are an example of light reflection and light often reflects off the surface of the water. In fact, that's something we're so accustomed to, we don't really even think about it that much. The only thing I really, really need you to know about the law of reflection, or about reflection, is, is the law of reflection, which is that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. That just basically means, as I've said in a previous video, the way light goes in is the same way it comes out, just like a ball bounces off a table. So this would be the angle of incidence, this would be the angle of reflection, and you might be able to tell they're the same angle, right? If I send light in, this is the incident ray, it's not going to bounce out like on a lower angle this direction, and it's not going to come up like like this and neither is it going to go straight back unless it hits another surface right here uh, it's going to bounce off at the same angle and that angle is always measured with respect to a line that is 90 degrees to the surface called a normal so that's reflection right pretty easy basic property of light that makes it behave like a wave now it doesn't necessarily separate it from a particle because particles can bounce as well but it's just one thing that light does that all other waves do as well Second thing light does is refraction. We've also talked about this. Refraction is when light bends, but specifically, remember this is about a medium change, right? So for the pencil in the cup, the reason it looks bent is light is going from uh, water into glass into air. Now, there's a lot more I could go into with this, but basically what you need to know is that the medium controls the speed of a wave. Well, because the medium is changing, that means the speed is changing. And without going into further detail, you need to know that when the speed changes, because light is a wave and not a simple particle, because it's three-dimensional in, in, in shape, part of the wave gets into the new medium before the rest of the wave does. And that makes the wave kind of change direction a little bit. So it's a change in direction due to a change in speed, due to a change in medium. 
Now, I want to spend a little bit of time on this because there's lots and lots of really imp interesting examples of refraction, uh, one of which is bow fishing, which is fishing with a bow and arrow. I don't know if you've ever done this before, but even if you haven't, you know what I'm talking about because if you've ever stuck something into the water, you might have seen something that looks a little bit like this. Like maybe you have a swimming pool, you put the the long pole in the pool to clean the pool out, and you'll notice it looks bent in the water. Well, that's because of refraction. So let's talk a little bit about how refraction works, specifically with bow fishing. Um, so when you're fishing, here you are on the bank, there's the fish. Now you, you need to understand that bow fishing really only happens at night because it's kind of difficult to see into the water during the daytime. So at night you're going to use, um, oops, you're going to use a spotlight, right? And so what happens is the spotlight shines into the water, but it's a medium change. We got air at the top, water at the bottom. So when the light goes into a new medium, it changes direction. And actually what happens is it bends toward the normal when it goes into a medium that is more dense. Because remember, those molecules just get in the way and slow it down. So light slows down and it bends uh, this direction. So you can see if this was the light coming into the water, it would not continue to go straight. It actually bends and uh, kind of turns right just a little bit, if you will. So if we're shining the light into the water, it looks like this. And so if this laser beam or if this light beam is actually going here, it's going to miss the fish if the fish is here. It's going to miss it. You're not actually going to see it. The only way to see this fish is to change the angle of the beam a little bit. It'll still bend, but when it bends, it hits the fish. And now we get reflection, which is what we just talked about. The light reflects off the fish, obeying the law of reflection, and it comes back up to the water surface. But it doesn't continue straight at this point either. We get refraction again, but now in the opposite direction because it's going from water back into air. And so the refraction happens. I don't know why I put that up there. The refraction happens like this so that the light beam can actually come into your eyes. So here's the thing that happens here. You need to know that your brain doesn't really know about refraction. It doesn't really know about bending of light. When your brain sees light, it simply assumes that light goes in straight lines because that's what's supposed to happen, right? So when your brain, when your eyes see this beam of light, your brain is going to assume that the beam is always going in a straight line and came from somewhere back here, right? It's going to automatically trace that beam of light back there. And so your brain sees the fish actually at this point, okay? So the fish is actually here, but you're aiming here because that's where you see it because of refraction. Point being, if you've ever been bow fishing, it's difficult. The only way to hit the fish is to not aim at it. If you aim at the fish, it's not going to work out for you. So the trick to bow fishing is to aim low, right? You have to just think about and imagine, okay, I know I see the fish here, but I know refraction is going on. And so the fish is actually a little bit closer to me than it appears. And so you have to aim low. You have to aim below the fish or closer to you than the fish is to actually hit it. I've done this before. It's kind of interesting, and you can see this picture here. Uh, it's really easy to see the line of the arrow here, right? It looks like the arrow is going to hit the water and go underneath the fish, um, but the fish is actually here-ish because of refraction. It is not exactly where it seems to be. And you notice this, again, if you put something in a pool, if you've put your hand in the fountain at the mall to grab a quarter, you'll notice that that thing isn't exactly where it appears to be. Other examples of refraction that are really interesting, the wavy light up above a fire or a grill is because of refraction. It's because the air is being heated above that fire. When the air is heating, it changes the medium, which changes the speed of the light. And when the speed changes, the direction changes. And that's the reason why the images get all blurry and fuzzy. Uh, magnifying glasses work because of refraction. If you wear glasses or contacts, that's because of refraction. Interestingly, mirages are because of refraction. I'm sure you've seen images like this when you're driving down the road, especially when it's warm outside in the summertime. doesn't really happen in the winter, which should give you a clue as to what's going on. Um, here's a really spectacular mirage in a desert. Looks like there's water there. There's actually not. The way this is happening is because of refraction. Basically, what's going on is as the sun hits that sand or that road, it reflects up off of the road and heats the air above it, which means there's a layer of really hot air just above the ground, whereas there's cooler air up above. So when you look up at the sky, the light basically goes in a straight line. It's not refracting. 
But the light rays coming from the sky, when they hit this hot air, they begin to bend. They begin to bend and curve, and so they actually bend and then get to your eyes through this direction. So the light waves that you're seeing that make it look like there's a pool, the reason it looks like a pool is because you're actually seeing the sky above, and your brain is used to seeing reflection of the sky above off of the surface of the water like I showed you earlier and so it makes you think oh there must be a pool up there not because you're seeing water but because you're seeing reflection of the sky you're seeing the sky it looks like a reflection and so it makes you think there's water there because water is the only thing that can reflect that the apparent image is down here it looks like that's what's going on again you trace the light rays back at in a straight line because your mind doesn't know they bend but again all you're seeing is light that actually came from the sky or really just from a point just up above the road that light bends just a little bit to get to your eyes now the interesting thing is this is called an inferior mirage the opposite can happen as well instead of cold it can be instead of warm it can happen over water which cools the air above it so the colder air is more dense and so the refraction happens in the opposite direction it's still a change in medium because the temperature is changing but we get these interesting images that look like this is this ship floating in the air well no it's not but the light rays coming from the ship bend in the other direction now notice this is the opposite direction of bend from the way it was before and that's because this air down here is more dense and as the as the light rays get into uh, the air farther and farther above the water the air is warmer and warmer so it bends and it bends and it bends to meet your eyes again your mind doesn't know that light bends and it traces the rays back in a straight line to form an image of those light rays up here so it looks like that ship is floating now this is a pretty spectacular image this doesn't happen all the time it has to be under special circumstances but it is a mirage it is a result of refraction which is the bending of light as a result of a medium change and that can either happen from a total change in medium we can go from one material to another or we can just change something about the medium for instance for this in, in ah, for instance in this case the temperature now I want to talk about one more on this video. Let's get to diffraction. The reason I want to talk about diffraction is because it's really, really similar to refraction. It's when light spreads out, right? Which is kind of like bending. And it's all due, this is due to the second law of thermodynamics, really, which is that waves energy, all energy wants to spread out. Waves are energy. So when you give them an, a, an opportunity to spread out, they're going to. This is the light spreading out past the corner of a barrier. We've talked about this before. It's important to know here that there is no medium change involved. There was with refraction. Here we're not talking about a medium change. We're talking about light. In this case, I'm going to talk about light going through a very narrow slit. And when it gets through that slit, it spreads out on the other side. Um, and we're going to talk about a diffraction grating, which disperses light into its component colors. And we've said this before, the way that you normally see diffraction and often refraction all as well is a rainbow, right? When you see a rainbow, you need to know that what's happening is that white light is bending. And I, I think you already, already know that white light is made up of all the individual colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet, but each of those colors bend at a slightly different angle. So when this light bends and spreads out, they separate. The colors separate. So you might have seen these diffraction glasses before. Sometimes they sell them at Fourth of July fireworks shows, uh, or you can sell them. You can buy them at Christmas time to look at Christmas light shows, um, and you can buy them in different shapes, right? So different. The, the Christmas lights on this tree look different depending on what glasses you see them through. This one, the diffraction grating is shaped like little snowflakes, so each light looks like snowflakes. But all this is, is a film with teeny tiny microscopic slits in it. And those slits simply make the light spread out, which disperses it into its individual colors. So again, as I said, all energy wants to spread out. This is a great um, diagram of what's happening here. And again, anytime light bends, as in this case, it simply separates into its individual colors because the blue light and the violet light bend less than the red and orange light do. So that's what diffraction is. Again, one of the most important things to remember about diffraction is that there is no medium change involved.